morning. It's Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, The Sign of Jonah, and our scripture is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12. One day, some teachers of religious law and Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to show us a miraculous sign to prove your authority. But Jesus replied, Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. But the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The people of Nineveh will stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. The Queen of Sheba will also stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it, for she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but you refuse to listen. To understand the sign of Jonah, a metaphor comparing the resurrection of Jesus with Jonah's three-day ride inside God's fish taxi, we must understand to whom Jesus was talking. Matthew tells us the group that came seeking a sign were teachers of the law and Pharisees. These were the religious professionals, the clergy of Israel. The teachers of the law, the rabbis, did just that. They taught each jot and tittle of Scripture's law. Their entire focus was zoomed in on legal correctness, making certain no law was forgotten. The Pharisees were more interested in living out or applying the law daily. They took what the rabbis taught and tried to walk the tightrope of never crossing the line of transgression. This group was made up of teachers of the law and keepers of the law. Their tribe is legion to this day. I recently had a conversation with a young man who had been raised in church but hadn't been for some time. It was a conversation that lasted a while and eventually turned to faith. He explained that his main life's goal was to treat other people like he wanted to be treated. It was a golden rule approach of which the Pharisees would be proud. This group of teachers and keepers of the law were also inspectors of anyone who infringed on their domain. They came to Jesus looking for proof. They wanted to look at Christ's credentials. And so Jesus held up Jonah and the Queen of Sheba. <laughs> One was a Jewish prophet who had trouble obeying God's command but eventually had to repent and obey. The other was a non-Jew and a woman hardly representative of authority to rabbis and Pharisees, but displaying the utmost of wisdom when she came to sit at the feet of Solomon. By holding up Jonah and Ethiopia's queen as righteousness, juxtaposed to the rabbis and Pharisees who prided themselves on self-righteousness, Jesus turned everything upside down. And the teaching for us is that the humility of repentance trumps the pride of righteousness every time. Veiled thinly in Jesus' teaching is the sign. The Lord is telling the teachers and the Pharisees to watch for the humility of the grave to be overthrown with the power of God on the third day. He was saying to them, you're like little children if you don't understand this. You think you'll be done with me if you put me in a grave? But you can't keep God in a grave. Here's the Apostle Paul's commentary on the rabbis and Pharisees in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it's the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. For you today... If you're like my young friend, trying to keep the golden rule, but forgetting the humility of worshiping the God of that golden rule, you're missing true wisdom in the power of God. Start looking for the third day's empty tomb. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.